know you in the you know the monetary reform refugees yeah. from the financial crisis including myself i mean i came yeah. across you in 2011 on, on right. the golem yeah. blog uh, many viewers will know you from the golem blog so how did the golem blog happen and the uh, debt generation book um in the same sort of way that, that, that getting into television happened by accident. I, I wish I could claim to have been a, you know, a man of enormous foresight and great planning, but it wouldn't be true. Um, I was just started writing um, as a putting comments in the online Guardian, you know, under, under the articles. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I just did that uh, because I was outraged by what I saw going on. Because once the crisis started unfolding, I could just tell there was something that smelled bad. There was a huge gap between what I could see going on and the official story. So all I did in being frustrated with the, the official stories, I went to the, the boards where day traders talk to each other, and there's, there's a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, and most of what they write is, is a bit impenetrable if you're not a trader, you know, mm -hmm. invest, at, you know invest at 30 with a stop out at 35 and there's something at 22 and you know, you think, well, it's... but in between times, they talk to each other about what they think is happening. Now, most of those people were to the right of Genghis Khan. They were mostly American, mostly really quite right wing libertarians. So politically, I wouldn't have a lot in common with them. But what was quickly obvious is the analysis that they made between them when they were saying what do you think is going on was often was usually really accurate um and i, re I realized that it was honest even to the point where the points that they were making argued against their own political ideology uh -huh. for the simple reason that they couldn't afford to lie to themselves yes. because whatever their analysis was they were going to bet their own money the next day yes yeah and the more I read it, the more it just diverged. There was the official story, and there was what was happening, and the, the, the day traders were on it. Yeah. Uh, and so I, re I, I, I read that stuff um, and got more and more outraged by the sort of concerted campaign of disinformation. You know, uh -huh. everybody, every single um, pundit who was ever wheeled on, you know, from Stephanie Flanders on down, they all said, it's, a, it's just a, a liquidity crisis. And the traders could clearly see this was not a liquidity crisis. This was a solvency crisis. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And therefore, they shorted things and some of them made an absolute fortune. So I just started writing that stuff. Um, I wrote a lot. And um, over the time, various people uh, became quite well known in that little that little world and mm -hmm. they said start writing a blog I, I said no a couple of times because I, I, I didn't fancy it um, um, but once people have asked you enough it starts to become rude to say no and I thought oh right well sod it I yeah. will and so well, then I started writing the blog out well, of the blog then uh, an old friend of mine had read it and said can I turn this into a book please mm -hmm. I was flattered and pleased and and he did yeah so although it's got my name on that book and I wrote the words. I really didn't do any of the work. He did. Okay. Mark Turner. Well, that book actually has a very good website, The Debt Generation, with some mm. really nice readings of, of some of the, the blogs that, that you read that are embedded in there. And it's embedded on your candidate website as well. I, I, yeah. there's, a, there's a page with that there if, if people want to go and have a look at that. It, it's quite easy to find on David's candidate website. Um, in the beginning of uh, Gollum X One Fit, you were pretty prolific. They're, they're, you were writing, watching from the uh, um, Progressive Momentum uh, blog. Mm -hmm. um, you'll know Bill. Bill. Hello, uh, Bill. We, yeah, well, uh, Bill uh, trailed the interview on his website and had been a writer. And Bill's question to you is: When are you going to start blogging again? You know, even just once a month, you know, your, yeah, I, th I yeah, think the no, quote no, I, is your public demands. Yeah, I feel bad, Bill. I do. Um, it's a combination of events. Um, 
there have been quite a number of really tough things that have happened at home, which has just meant that I, 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 I didn't have the... Um, it's more emotional um, horsepower, more than mental. And, and that's put a big dent in things. But I, and, and I'd say that's, in some ways, that's the main thing. But, but the other big part of it is um, so little has changed in the nature of the crisis that I often think I, I should write about this. And I think the same thing four, four or five times, you know, with oh. the, 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 the things which the banks and the central banks and the politicians are doing and the, and the phrases they're using, they're just doing the same thing over and over and again. And how many times can you, can you say, look, the banks that they're propping up, are, they're not just, it's not a liquidity crisis, it's a solvency crisis. Some of these banks are still insolvent. How, how many times can you say, look, how can they, they have still bad debts after all this time? How can a Spanish bank or a Landis bank, or, but the Spanish banks are a better example, s suddenly go down a few weeks ago on the basis of bad debts that were made 10 years ago, some of them. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Yeah. And of course, we, we, you know, I've, I've written about it several times. It's just, you know, you, the old loan is, is not being paid and is going to expire, so you just roll it into a new loan, and suddenly yes. the new loan is up to date. And when that one gets a bit behind, you put it into another new loan. Yeah. And, and, you know, the talk about austerity, it's the same mantras, just repeated and repeated and repeated. And I, and I think to myself, can I really just refute this or take issue with it again? Yes, yeah. Um, and so I, 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 I want to write something new rather than just repeat myself. But apart from that excuse, I mean, you're right, Bill, I should write. Um, um, I just feel that just making the same criticisms of the same idiots um, is difficult to, to gear yourself up to do it. <laughs> yeah. Because they I, are the same idiots. I, I think telling your, the same line. your analysis is so incisive and memorable, and it explains things in an accessible way. Um, yeah. Well, that's nice I, I, I think we do know that a lot of the politicians that trot out their sort of pieties uh, are are clueless. Genuinely, they they don't know. Like a number of them probably do think that the magic money tree doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you're right. Some of them are just genuinely useful idiots, um, and the ones that do know what's going on either benefit from it or um, are too afraid to say anything. Yeah. I mean, when I started reading your blog, um, it was the righteous anger that, that I really mm. identified with. And, you know, talking about people's pension provisions, people's, uh, uh, you know, the austerity and benefit sanctions, yeah. uh, you know, when, when the Tories came in, and headed off a recovery at the pass with austerity and mm. the EU doing the same thing. Now, you and I call those sorts of policies neoliberal. Um, yeah. I mean, f for the viewers, um, w w would you explain what your understanding is of the... We were talking about left-wing and right-wing libertarians and the American approach... Uh, can you explain yeah. something of, of how you read that that political ideology, which seems to be everywhere? You know, Tony Blair is yeah, no different see, to Margaret Thatcher yeah, It's a good question. The, the, the problem is, although you and I, would, in the short her hand, will call it um, neoliberal, I know what I mean by that, and it, I've, expound, I've explained it through the blog, but the problem is... Um, People on the left will look at this, at the way the, the crisis is being managed, and say, "This is a, a neoliberal disaster. Mm -hmm. This is a disaster cooked up in the private banks, unregulated private banks." The people, the, the people on the right, neoliberals, will look at the disaster and say, "This is a Keynesian left-wing disaster," mm -hmm. on the grounds that um, governments have been intervening massively and 
taking, from their point of view, printing up money, taking on debt, and pumping government money in to no avail. And so each of them wants to see that the problem is in the other camp. The libertarians want to see the problem is with the government and, and government intervention and the Keynesian model, you know, government. Uh -huh. and, the, and the people on the left say, no, no, want to see it as a libertarian, uh, an unregulated. And the problem is, in some ways, they're both right and both wrong. But those who want to just not, rather than get to the bottom of the problem, just want to fly the flag for their side and blame it on the other, they can get locked. And I, I think they are locked in this pointless combat. Um, because the, the, the libertarians are, well, sorry, the, the left wing is, is right that this was a problem and still is a problem of pr the private sector, the private banks, the private financial institutions um, taking, extending loans that were never going to be repaid uh, and saddling themselves with debts which would blow them up and then saying we're so big if you let us blow up the world the sky will fall in and you must bail us out so the left wing is right that that's the nature of the problem it is unregulated um, private sector they created it there, there wasn't a vast out of control public spending in 2008 you know UK debt to GDP in 2008 was 43 percent which was historically low and hadn't been going up it's a small increment. By 2013, our debt to GDP was 86%. It had doubled. Well, it, it wasn't that the, the, a left-wing government had gone on a spending binge giving nurses 5,000% increases in salaries. What had happened is we spent 1.4 trillion bailing out private banks and saving their, their private bondholders from having to take the loss that they should have taken. Yeah. But the, but the right-wingers, the libertarians, are right that we have had a series of governments, left and right, pumping vast amounts of, of, of public money in, which they've raised through um, taking on debt, public debt, and they have pumped it in. And so that does look like the right-winger are, are right, that it's a, it's, the government response has been fatuous. What they, what they miss is the fact that... Um, Pumping public money in isn't necessarily a bad thing. But what Keynes never said, what Keynes said is you must, you, you, the government can intervene when, the, when the, the private sector fails and put money in to keep the, the wheels turning. But what he said is you've got to put it in in an economically productive way. And that's what our governments haven't done. They haven't put it in in any kind of economically productive way. They could have spent that money um, in promoting small and medium enterprises. But they didn't. They shoved it into moribund banks where it disappeared and did no economic good at all. Yeah. I and think, so it's... Yeah. I, I, I don't want to see it as a left versus right problem because both sides have been utterly fatuous. Yes. And, and have missed the point. I it, think it, at this point, if I can just interject, I mean, your blog sure. has a very large... Cons constituency of MMTers, and I have a lot of respect sure. for MMTers, even though I've yeah, had political differences with them. Um, then there are the positive moneyers, the honest yeah. moneyers. Um, money is a construct which most people think they understand, but don't. Mm. Like that. And yeah. uh, I think on your blog, um, there are plenty of posts of your own and then other hell I, I think you mentioned positive money back in quite in the early days of positive money. I, re I reviewed the book when it first came out yeah um so in terms of that question yeah. um i mean if we sort of give the shout out to mosla mitchell um and then steve, steve Keen, Keen, who's Russian, kind of yeah. in the middle and then uh, the positive money, and uh, which is Ben Dyson's lot, and uh, yeah. uh, Fran Botan, I think it's Fran Botan is the new head of research there, Good and man. people like Professor Richard Werner, and uh, yeah. they're, they're all there, um, but people watching you as the green candidate for the green leadership, if we move on to the green leadership now, 
Mm. Um, one of your points was the Green Party doesn't seem to know anything about economics and finance, and if it does, it doesn't talk about it. So, yeah, can we yeah. dive... Well, I mean, there are people in the Green Party, Party who know quite a lot about it, but when it, it, it's given no prominence. It's, it's, it's not given a lot of prominence in um, our manifesto. It certainly wasn't the last one. And it's not something that, that we, that our leadership puts at the forefront of, of, what a, of what green politics is about. And I think that's a mistake. I mean, my feeling has always been that no party is going to be able to deliver on the promises it makes you in election year unless they can run and control the economy, or yeah. at least run the economy. And we certainly won't deliver on saving the environment unless we first regain democratic, some semblance of democratic control over our um, economy. I think these things are inextricably bound. And therefore, I think it's wrong and just silly to talk about all the things we want to do mm -hmm. without making it absolutely dead center of what people think about when they hear the word green. We, we, we have to make uh, our economic and financial policies and our economic and financial understanding absolutely central. Otherwise, people think we're a party with a lovely wish list of things, but the same way that, um, you know, my kids could have a lovely wish list of things, you know, the, the, the list you write for Father Christmas. You have no idea how Father Christmas is ever going to deliver these things, but you write the list, number one, number two, number three, number four, and, and I find that a huge... Yeah. Well, it um, helps to know about and the magic. I'd just like to say about the positive money and MMT, I've never gotten into the middle, I've refused to get into the middle of the of the kind of the tribal warfare that goes on. I understand that there are differences, and I understand, I think, some of those differences. But the main insights that they share are the important thing. Yes, and I do I sometimes that. despair that it becomes a little bit like Monty Python. Yes. yes. Yeah. People's Liberation Front of Palestine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. MMT. Yeah. You know. Passions run high. You don't need yes. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, backing back to 2015, um, yeah. you did say uh, in the 2016 leadership campaign that you fully expected there to be another election coming up. Um, yeah. 